video assumes that you have the Arduino IDE set up and working on your computer. If you have not done that yet, please watch my video on setting up the Arduino IDE. In this video, we are going to be covering the sketch that we use for the LED automation board. And if you have not already done so, go to my website and download the sketch. Once you have the sketch loaded on your computer, then you have to import it into the Arduino IDE, which is what we have running here. So to do that, we can open it. And then we want to go to where we placed our sketch. And it says the file needs to be inside a sketch folder named RV sign blank. Create this folder. Yes. Now this is on a Mac. It may be a little different on Windows. And then when we're done, this should come up like this. Now, if you've been watching the other videos on the RV automation board, you know that you can use it for either a monochrome or an RGB version. And when I wrote this sketch, I wrote it for both. On this first line, I've got a comment. Anything that's grayed out like this is a comment. And the program basically ignores it. But this first line, it says, use for RGB version only. And then we've got this set up for RGB. And then we have this line here, use for monochrome version only. And the whole line is grayed out. So it's going to ignore that whole line. So if we wanted to change this to go from an RGB to a monochrome version, we're going to want to come up here and do a double slash. And then you see how it grays everything out? This is a comment line now. And then we want to do that. We want to do that because these say for RGB version. And then we want to enable this. So we basically delete those two hash marks. And now you see that that's turned active. And we want to go through and do that with all of these. You have two more here, a bunch of them here, a bunch of them here. So just go through here and enable the ones for the monochrome, if you want to go monochrome, and then disable RGB or vice versa. So since uh, we're going to keep this as RGB for the discussion, I'm going to go back here and go back to where it was originally. All right, there's three sections of this sketch. And by the way, these are called sketches. They're not called programs. In the Arduino world, they're called sketches. The first line is called the declaration section. And what we're doing at the very beginning here is we are defining what pins are used for what. Pin zero is G blank pin or green blank pin. Pin one is red blank pin. Pin two is blue blank pin. I'm telling at 8085 that I'm going to be connecting the green LED strip to pin zero. I'm going to connect the red LED strip to pin one. I'm going to connect the blue LED strip to pin two. And then I'm going to connect a switch to input one and input two. And that's how I'm going to make the selection between four different scenarios. And I'm going to connect a photo cell to analog port 2. And these are just different values that are in variables that are needed by the application. Now this AT8085 has the capability of having a timer. And that's what this is for. And the timers are set up for milliseconds, which is 1 1,000th of a second. So 0 0.001 second is 1 millisecond. So if I'm going to set up a timer, I need to set it up in milliseconds. And for example, 10 seconds is 10,000 milliseconds. Well, this is just by convention. It's just a programming convention. It's a lot easier for me to write 10 seconds than it is for me to write 10,000. Later on in the program, I won't know what 10,000 means, but I always know what 10 seconds means. And I'm doing the same thing for one hour, two hour, four hours, or eight hours. So now we're in section two which is the setup section. A setup is always required in an Arduino sketch. 
A setup section is run one time. You can kind of think of this as the boot up section, I suppose, for lack of a better term. As it finishes booting, I'm creating a splash screen. And what a splash screen is, is it just is a method to show when you first turn the thing on that it's working. We're basically blinking the LEDs four times. And that's what this for loop is. This is called a loop. So basically the program control is going to come down here and do every one of these commands. Loop back up, do them again, loop back up, do them again, and then again the fourth time and then they'll go on. Digital write means that it's going to output a logic high. Logic high, once it hits the transistor that's connected to the RGB strip for the red string, it's going to turn all the LEDs on. So whenever you see a digital write on the red blink pin high, that's going to turn the LED on. Same with the green, same with the blue. And then I'm going to wait one-tenth of a second. Then I'm going to do the same thing over again, but now I'm going to set them low and that turns them off. This turns the LED on, this turns the LED off. So turn all three LEDs on, wait one-tenth of a second, all three LED colors off, wait a tenth of a second, repeat that four times. That's what this does. Now this is the other portion that's required. Every sketch needs a loop. After it goes through the setup, it goes into this loop and it just continues forever. It's kind of like this four here, except it just keeps going, it never stops. Once everything gets started, this is actually the main program area that will stay there forever. The first thing is an if statement. There's two kinds of if statements. One's an if, and then the other is, is if else. If means do this, if else means do this or that. Well, this is an if else because it says if here, and then it says else here. So if the photo cell is less than that value, that means it's daytime. So in the daytime, we want to increment our counter, and then we're going to turn all the LEDs off. Well, if they're already off, it's just going to ignore it. So actually, once every second or so, this loop executes, and it just keeps turning it off, turning it off, turning it off, so on. If the photo cell exceeds that value, that means it's nighttime. This is no longer true, so then it's going to do the else. And if you remember, there are some selector switches. We're going to read the values of those switches. So if the first selector switch is high, then this branch value is going to equal 1. Start it out at 0. And if the second switch is high, we're going to add 2. Those four switches is going to give me a value of 0, 1, 2, or 3, depending on their current position. This determines which blink sequence is going to happen. If it finds that the value is zero, then it's going to come into another if statement. For one hour, it will turn the LEDs on all three strips. Once that hour is exceeded, then it turns all three of those LEDs off and they stay off until it becomes daylight. And then once it becomes dusk again, if it's still set at zero, then it'll repeat. And with the RGB, remember, we only have four selections. Now, if we were doing monochrome, we could have a branch value equals four. We could have a five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 15. So, how do we make any changes? If we wanted to uh, change the pattern, we would just turn these sequences on and off. We could change this to four hours. And we could leave, for example this off and this off. We can make any combination of pattern that we like. We can add more commands to this. Put a time delay in here for two hours and then under this else we could stick another time delay in there for two hours so we could make it run one pattern and then make it run another pattern and so on. So if you want to make some change to this what I recommend doing is just keep the original sketch somewhere that you downloaded from my website so that if you really mess this up, then you can come back in and start over again with downloading the file into here again. And now if we want to go into the Arduino website, arduino.cc, under learning, there's a tutorial section 
which is going to show you how to do almost everything. It's going to show you how to make a voltmeter. It's going to show you how to, you know, run uh, a servo motor. It's going to show you how to turn relays on and off. And some of these is going to require these more powerful boards, not just an AT Tiny 85. And you go to the reference section. Then these are all the different commands that the Arduino understands. So if you remember, we were talking about if statements and if else statements. So if you click on that, it gives you an example of what actually happens. Now with the AT1085, just understand that not every command may be available. There may be some that are reserved only for the more powerful Arduinos. You're just going to experiment. You may find that when you're done with playing around with this AT1085, you may want to expand your knowledge in the world of Arduino. And then you may want to go into some of these larger boards. And they're not all that expensive. This is probably one of the most popular ones that you know. You can buy clones of these for five bucks. And so the last thing I want to talk about is errors. Sooner or later, you're going to end up getting an error. And one of the most common reasons is that every line has to have a semicolon. Although there are a couple exceptions. For instance, with this F statement, you'll see there's not a semicolon. That's because it's a multiple line statement and then it has these curly braces instead. But let's come up here and let's take and delete that semicolon. We do a verify. It's going to give us an error, and the errors are always in orange. And it's kind of cryptic, and also one error might make it look like there's another error. What I would do is if make any changes, make one change, click on verify, make another change, click on verify, and so on. because. If you make 10 changes before you click on verify, you may not know where the problem was. So if we put the semicolon back in, click on verify, it's good again. Another pitfall is uppercase versus lowercase. These are all case sensitive. So if I came over here and made this a capital B, it says it doesn't understand what branch value is. This is what you need to do is you need to download this from my website and you don't have to do anything to it. And you just plug in the Arduino board and then if you're using the SparkFun AVR programmer you just plug that in click on upload and then that's the program loading and then you're done so at the very minimum if you just want to create the software in the AT1085 for my projects all you got to do is download the the sketch from my website and then bring it up in here and then click on upload and you're done.